In this lesson, we're going to analyze exactly what Djokovic does so well with his two-handed backhand and what we can all use on that stroke. Hey everyone, Coach Simon here with Top Tennis Training and let's get stuck in right away. Now the Djokovic backhand grip, this is the foundation of any stroke, the way you hold the racket. Now with his top hand, he's using an Eastern forehand grip. And with the bottom hand, he's using a Continental grip. And this is the standard way to hold the racket on your two-handed backhand. Eastern forehand on the top hand, Continental on the bottom hand. Now when Djokovic is in a rally situation, very often he's waiting in his forehand grip. He wants to hit his forehand as often as possible. And this is what we should all be looking to do. We should be waiting with our forehand grip, and if it comes to the backhand, then change into that grip. And that's exactly what Djokovic does. He's holding the throat of the racket with his left hand and he's holding the forehand grip with the right hand. Now when he recognizes the ball's coming to his backhand side, that initial step is him coiling the upper body, so turning the shoulder, but also changing the grip. So the left hand starts to slide down the racket into his backhand grip, and at the same time it's sliding down, the right hand then changes into that continental. Now before we go any deeper into this lesson, if you want more help with your two-handed backhand, you can download our free guide, I'll leave the link beneath this lesson. And this happens in unison with that coil. So he isn't wasting time by changing grips and then coiling, he's doing it at the same time. It's this. And the quicker you can master this, the easier it will be for you to actually create time on your backhand. Now something that Djokovic does almost better than anybody is the way he actually opens up the hips while he's moving, especially mid-air. Very often while he's in his split step, he will recognize where the ball's going and that comes down to him timing that split step perfectly. If you can time it where you're at the peak of your split step in sync with the contact point of your opponent, what happens is the first four or five feet when the ball's traveling towards you, you'll pick up where the ball's going. And mid-air, Djokovic is then able to open up and turn towards the direction he's going to be moving into. And on the backhand side, it would look like this. He's mid-air and he's turning. Split step, then turn. So he's not landing in that traditional way, which is split step, then do the pivot. It's split and pivot in one. This creates time for Djokovic and this allows him to then move to the ball with those normal running steps. He's not moving to the ball side on. That takes too long. It's simply here and run to the ball as normal. Now on the Djokovic backhand, right from the beginning of the stroke, he's creating leverage in the racket head and in the hands. Leverage basically equals force over that oncoming ball. And he does this by having the racket head higher than the grip level. This creates that leverage, that feeling of he has that powerful weapon in his hands but it also creates space to build up that momentum and create that racket head speed. So by having his racket head higher than the grip, he's actually allowing his body to produce that power and the control right from the start of the swing. Now from this position, very often Djokovic will step forward with his right leg into a neutral or a semi-closed stance. So the neutral stance would be this stance here. A 
and the semi-closed stance would be this stance here. Now both of these stances allow Djokovic to then have a weight transfer during his contact zone. We'll cover that slightly later in this lesson. But as he reaches that power position, Djokovic has a great body turn. He has the shoulder turned, he has his hips turned, he has his feet turned. And this creates that optimal position for producing the power on his backhand. Now when he reaches that power position, he's tracking the ball with his chin over the right shoulder. This creates that massive coil with the body, which then allows that uncoil when he starts to swing towards the point of contact. In that power position, his racket head is higher than the grip level, so it isn't level like this, it's above the grip. This once again creates that leverage or force in the racket head, and this will give him the space that he needs to then produce that racket head speed through the point of contact. Now in that power position, we can see that Djokovic has the right arm extended and the left arm slightly bent. This is because he wants his left hand relaxed so that he has that extension through the point of contact when he actually goes to hit that ball. If his left hand's already extended, it becomes a rigid, stiffer shot. But by having that relaxation in the top hand, he's then able to extend through that strike zone. Now, something that Djokovic does better than most players on that two-handed backhand is he shoulders the ball. And this basically means that it looks as if Djokovic is going to hit the ball with his right shoulder. He almost leans into the ball with that right shoulder. He points it towards that oncoming ball. Imagine having a medicine ball. If you wanted to throw the medicine ball, especially a heavy one, explosively, you have to coil the body to then uncoil. And this is the same on that two-handed backhand. He's shouldering the ball so that he can then explode into it. Now, at the same time that he's doing that turn with the body, he's also storing up the energy on that back leg, the left leg. This is crucial in having that weight transfer from the back leg to the front leg. Very often players will struggle with power on their two-handed backhand because they go onto the front leg too early. So when they're in the power position, they're already on their right leg. And this means that they have nothing to then transfer into the ball. With Djokovic, he's loading up on this back leg and he's able to then have that transfer through that contact point. So loading up on the back leg is crucial if you want to have that weight transfer through the ball. From this power position, the racket head will then start to drop down. And depending on what he wants to do with that shot, it will either drop further down if he's applying more topspin. So the more topspin he wants, the lower the racket head will drop. and then this allows him to brush the back of the ball to hit that low to high swing path. But if he's going for a flatter shot, it will just drop to about the level of the grip, and then from here he extends through in a more linear fashion. So he changes the contact zones and the swing paths during that contact point. So he's able to adapt and adjust his swings according to the shot that he wants to hit. Now after he's made contact in front of his body, what happens is Djokovic will then have his left hip 
uncoil and allow his left foot to come around and join the right leg. This allows him to then recover effectively, but also have all his body weight going into that shot. If I keep my left leg here and I try to hit the ball powerfully, now I've blocked off the rotation of the hips. I'm also damaging my ability to recover quickly because from here, I now have to go backwards to then recover. Whereas with the Djokovic technique, he's stepping forward with this left leg. So his hip is uncoiling, the hips open up, the foot comes around, he pushes off and he's back in position. So there you have it, the Novak Djokovic backhand. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I hope you'll use some of these tips from the lesson on your own two-handed backhand to get more power, more spin, and more control with that shot. If you have enjoyed the lesson, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, of course, and turn on the notification bell. Signing off, Coach Simon from TTT. All the best and see you soon, guys.